In this video, I'm going to give you five features in Canva that every digital product creator or designer should know about. And hang around for number five, because especially if you mock your products up, whether that's digital products, physical products, or print on demand, you're going to want to see this so that you can mock your products up and really stand out. So let's jump into Canva. First of all, I want to go to the Dream Lab here. Whether you've got a free account or a pro account, you get access to this. Of course, you can use Canva Pro for free for 30 days. Check out all of the great features that are inside of here. I'll leave that link below if it's something that you're interested in. So when you click on the Dream Lab button, it brings you to this. And this is an AI generator. It's improving all of the time. And in here, you can create all sorts of images for all sorts of different things, whether you're creating digital products, things like Tumblr wraps, junk journals, clip art, any images at all that you want to sell or use on your digital products. You can create images for your physical products. So whether you sublimate onto products, whether that's clothing, tumblers, mugs, you can create your images for that. Also the same with your print on demand. And inside of here, you can add an image to guide your creation. You've got different styles that you may want to create and you've got your sizes. So I wanted to create an image today and I decided to choose something to do with the garden in spring. It's coming that time, we're ready for a bit of sunshine. Plus we're farmers, we grow crops. And if truth be known, it's something that I've always fancied doing is growing some vegetables, but it's not practical with time. I might as well just go and buy them from Aldi. But we know that's not the point, so. Anyway, that's why I chose this design. So I had this vision in mind and I created a prompt. I wanted to create a garden that was blooming with vegetables, because I'm also a foodie, and that showed spring was coming and the beautiful things that we can create when we put our mind to it. So I created quite a detailed prompt. I got out of my mind what I was actually thinking. So basically I wanted a watercolour image and I wanted the vegetables to be in full bloom and I wanted cute things in there like sunflowers, wheelbarrows, seed packets. I wanted it to be peaceful but also the excitement of actually growing something. So here's the prompt. And I'll leave this prompt below as well and you can try it in whatever generator you use too. But these are the results that I got in the Canva Dream Lab. And I wanted to do some landscape and I also wanted to do some square ones. So here we have smart and we also and I also use the sketch colour. So these were the smart ones and these were the sketch. Not much difference really, it's just what you prefer. So I'm going to go for this one and I'm at, you can edit it direct in Canva, but I want to download it and I want to upload it back to Canva and I'll show you why. So this is the first feature that you should know about in Canva is the Dream Lab for creating your images. Now the second feature I want to show you, first of all, I'm going to create a custom size canvas and I want to do that in landscape. So 1920 by 1080 pixels and I want to upload my image in. I'll choose this one that I've already had. I'm just going to drop it there and centralise it. If, for instance, you'd done a square but you wanted it wider, this second feature can be really useful. So click on the image so you've got the purple box around it. Go to Edit, and this is a Canva Pro feature. Go across here to your Magic Studio and across to Magic Expand. The whole page, click Expand and let it work its magic now. And it's going to fill in the extra pieces. So we've got four to choose from. Which do we think looks better? I think I quite like that. So I'll click the done. Now, if I decide I don't want this down the side, that that just look, doesn't look right, I can actually move it like that, but at least it has given me more here within the image. So that's feature number two, that's the magic expand. Feature number three inside of here is the magic eraser. Now, the eraser isn't just used for getting rid of things. It's also used for blending and it can be really useful when you've got objects in there that don't just look right, that AI generates and it's a little bit off. It doesn't fit with the design. So to use it, we click on it again, get the purple box around, click the edit and go to magic eraser. Now it's going to show the original image before we'd stretched it out, so we'll just ignore this. But we've got this little circle here to use, and you can use the brush size up and down depending on how big it is. Now for instance, I may not want this in because it doesn't much look much like a butterfly, so if I just click on it like that, I can erase it, so that's quite simple. And again, the same here with this. Now I may not want that in, and I may also want some kind of blend in here. Let's erase it. So that's moved that a little bit. If we click backwards, click the back arrow to undo what we've done, you'll see the difference. There. So you can have a play around with that if you want to fill that with more colour. Also, these here look a little bit like 
a cross between a bee and a butterfly. So let's try and blend this body of the bee in here and see if it'll blend it more to look like a butterfly. Yeah, so that's helped. Again with this one here. You might have to do it a couple of times if you're not quite happy with the result. And then I think that looks good. So click that off. So that was feature number three, the magic eraser. Now feature number four allows us to alter text. So say for instance we didn't like that font or if it was spelled incorrectly, which often happens with AI, that's not a problem. Again, we click on the design, make sure there's a purple box around it, click edit and we go across here to grab text. Again, it's going to show us all that design before we cropped it. It now starts to pick out the text. We click on it, we grab it, and we can do anything at all with that text. We can change the font, we can move it about, we can do whatever we want to change that text within that image. Again, just hit the back arrow to have it how it was. And that's feature number four, the grab text feature. Now feature number five, again, is within the Magic Studio. And if we go down here to apps, we can see the mock-up. And in here, we've got all kinds of mock-ups that we can use. Now, if we wanted one of those there, we can see them all. You can choose which computer you want. But what it will do, because it's expanded it and we've moved it off the canvas, it will put, show the image inside of here with that extra on. So I'll show you. Click on that and it's going to put and it's going to put that image in that had that that we cut off. So what I would do, I would download that image. If you've edited it with the Magic Expand, I would download it. I would upload it back in, drag it across to my canvas, click on it, go to the edit again, and then go to the mockups again. That way you've got the completed image. I'll go to see all, see all of the computers and choose that one. And the reason I think that that's a good one to choose, because of the angle that that computer's on, that's only something really that you could do inside of Photoshop. Most of the frames for computers that you see are when the computer is facing your front on so that you can put the image in square. And again, you could use the Magic Expand here to add the extras onto the computer. You would have to download that though and upload the image back in because when you try and edit it, it will only edit with this picture. It won't go back to the editing studio. So for instance, I could upload this picture back in, click it back in here, go to the edit, magic expand, whole page, and then that's going to give you the edges of the computer. So you could now edit background removal, and there you've just got the computer if you didn't want that other stuff that was in the image there. And you can use that in your scenes or to showcase whatever you've created in here. You've got mugs, you've got phones, you've got books, tote bags. There's all sorts that's been added and I'm sure that there will be more and more that's added. And remember, you've also got your photos on here. So if you wanted to mock an image up on a mug, type in mug, you've got your play mugs there or you've something like this. And that way, if you've created a design like that, then you can show us how it looks on the mug. And you've all sorts in here, so you might want a pillow. Again, you can put your designs on that. And again, you might decide that you want that brighter edit, adjust here, and you can improve the brightness and all your other buttons here to adjust your image. I would group it all together, group, I would Command C to copy it. I will then create a square, say 2000 by 2000, and I would paste it into that square. And there I would have my mock up either for print on demand or to show the image that I created if I was selling that. It really is limitless what you can do, but just going this extra little bit allows you to stand out because not everybody does this and shows how the product can be used. So to recap, you've got the Canva Dream Lab that can create your images. 
Number two, you've got the magic expand that can infill at the side to extend your pictures if they don't fit the canvas. Number three, you've got the magic eraser that can smooth out imperfections. It can remove items that you don't want in the image. You can just get items to blend in. And that's one of my favorite tools for just polishing images off. Number four, you've got the text grab that can alter any spelling mistakes. It can change the font or allow you to change the size of the text so that the design looks exactly how you want it. And number five, you've got your mock-ups. Really useful if you're creating digital products, physical products, or print-on-demand products. Using these, as well as your photos options, here gives you lots of scope to be able to mock your products up that stand out above everybody else and that is half the battle when you're selling on Etsy or anywhere else is making your designs different is making them stand out and showcasing them to the best of your ability and if you want some design styles and product ideas go grab this free resource 15 styles and design trends to sell big on Etsy in 2025 that gives you lots of product ideas design ideas in there it's free go grab that guide and then go watch this video here next how to edit text on images in Canva and it's an easy step-by-step -step video I go in detail how to change the text in Canva and also this video of how to resize a Tumblr app or any design in Canva quickly and easily I'll see you in the next one